friends now the uh, one of the hottest topics in our country and uh, that has become a, one of the central political questions also he is connected with the economic reservation that means economically weaker sections reservation to ews so the cws reservation has now become part of the indian constitution with the uh, supreme court endorsing the 103rd amendment of the indian constitution made by modi government in 2019 and the split verdict of the supreme court three majority and two minority a decision is being taken that that is constitution now before going coming to the question of this economic reservation and other things i must first want to say the political contest in which this situation or this court judgment is coming that is very important today because in 1991 the rao government promulgated an executive order granting 10% reservation to economic reservation to so called economically weaker sections before that the cpim on november 4 1990 in a central committee resolution has demanded that economic reservation should be implemented in all government jobs that was the contest in which the mandal commission was coming forward mandal report then the temple campaign against that a very turbulent political situation was there it was at that time that uh, on the right wing rss forces hindutva forces and on the left wing cpim with this backing the congress put forward the economic reservation 10% economic reservation in 1991 but in 1993 the constitution nine member constitution bench of the supreme court struck down that order of the rao government without a second vote they said that it is unconstitutional because as per the indian constitution economic reservation there is no provision because as per the indian constitution reservation is done for the historical injustice discrimination against the oppressed castes by the upper castes and it is for an atonement as a penance to this historical injustice that reservation is implemented in the constitution and uh, it was upholding that position that reservation is not a poverty alleviation program it is not a program for removing economic inequality but it is a specific program for removing social injustice and for representation of the untouchables and the oppressed in the mainstream social order that this caste based reservation was uh, yeah, was became it became part of the indian constitution and it it became the core of the constitution the basic structure of the constitution and therefore this positive discrimination discrimination is essential for bring out equality only through a positive discrimination towards those sections who have historically discriminated only through that positive discrimination can equality be achieved that is up whether we whether the constitution will achieve equality or not that is not another question i am not going into those details but that was the spirit but now we see the congress government failed because the supreme court upheld that constitutional that the basic principle of reservation enshrined in the indian constitution 
Supreme Court upheld and said that there is no provision for economic reservation as per the Indian constitution. And it also said that there is no question of a crossing of this uh, reservation 50% quota cannot be crossed. And therefore, including the OBC, as per the Mandal Reposition, and the OBC quota is also implemented, total reservation should be uh, should be less than 50 percent. That was understood. And we know that since then, there has been an offensive, a right-wing offensive. The Hindutva forces led by the RSS were very active. And uh, the Sopti Hindutva pursued by Congress was also advancing. And uh, uh, the Rao government, the Manmohan government, that uh, ruled India from 2004 to 2014. The Vajpayee government could not touch that because the constitution, uh, when the Supreme Court upheld that this economic reservation is uh, an antithesis of the constitution, naturally then Rao, Vajpayee government did that. But the Congress government tried to bring a constitutional amendment. Work was there. In 2015, in, while participating in a election campaign in Gujarat, I mean in Bihar, in October, Modi said that those who are going for this economic reservation and crossing the quota, 50% quota, they are dishonest. That is his famous statement. Dishonest. Because he is using the same populist, the same uh, what is called rhetoric to catch votes and to uh, tarnish the Congress that they are violating the Constitution, but he is upholding the Constitution. But we know that every fascists are adapting using populist slogans. But when they come to power, they will go their own way. That is history. I am not going into those details. When Modi came to power in 2015, the then Supreme Court judges, Gogoi and Niranjan, two judges, justices, they made a historic judgment, comment, that uh, there should be a new matrix for reservation. This matrix should be composed of a differentiated, a differential cat. It is a, it is composed of a differentiated category, a matrix, differentiated matri matrix, which is composed of uh, educational backwardness, economic backwardness, stature of the family, such issues should be taken into consideration for reservation. So that means uh, the question of how caste-based reservation is being diluted, that process is going on. And uh, throughout there has been a campaign in India that it is reservation that leads to casteism. It is not, reservation is required by or is made, po it, is, it is necessitated by caste system, not like that. It is reservation that leads to casteism in India, that was a way in which intellectuals and the mainstream media began to discuss. Therefore, we must see that Mohan Bhagavat, he said that there is no nothing about caste. There is no meaning in saying caste. Caste is irrelevant. This is what people say. So caste is not relevant. That what the CPM and the mechanical communists also said. They said that when communists come to power, caste will be withering away. At that time, it was Ambakar who called them Brahmin boys. Because in India, you make when you make a class analysis, unless you study the caste system that cuts across base and superstructure, that means the material basis and the cultural superstructure, and how it is a decisive factor in the class formation, how it is a decisive factor in the division of labor in India, how it is a decisive factor in wealth appropriation, political power, everything. Without that, you cannot have a class analysis. So, without knowing this, the so-called left sections also said that caste is meaningless. And uh, even more, uh, RSS, even, you see, this uh, gold worker said, Hinduism is casteism. It is clear, so there is no meaning in saying about casteism. It is Hinduism in casteism. So, every time you need not mention that it is there. So it should be there, it will continue. So this was the understanding really. And it was in that context that Modi is agenda of a Hindu Rashtra. That means a Hindu Rashtra whose ideological basis is Manivadu Hindutva. 
which is brahmanical ideology which is against the vast majority of the oppressed and the toiling people the vast majority of the oppressed and the untouchables so that is what modi is planning under the instance of rss so you no know, rss is succeed rss has succeeded in bringing out the one third one one not third constitution amendment in 2019 and the supreme court has endorsed it because the situation is different today today court also has become part of the system today judiciary not only neo fascism has penetrated rss has penetrated into the whole micro and macro aspects of society every sphere every material sphere and cultural sphere military civil service administration education culture judiciary everywhere it is there so they have succeeded in carrying out their agenda in a very through covert and overt means that also I need not explain here it is in this context that the court also took a position that economic reservation is now possible and it is essential for achieving equality that is what they said then let us see what is happened here what is the principle of equality there should not be any discrimination here in this economic reservation obcs sc sts all are excluded only the upper caste who already control for example a, a few years back there was a census a, a census means a data that 77% of the class 1 posts are held by the upper caste so it is a, a, on there is, there is no statistics there is no evidence to prove that the uh, upper caste are suffering from economic disadvantage because as per our evidence as per our in, uh, understanding the whole economy the whole corporates the whole wealth appropriation are done by the upper caste people so it is to them again a uh, purely for them that means the others are excluded and uh, those who are belonging to the obc sc st are excluded so if economic reservation for them it will it should be applicable because they are already having caste reservation now economic reservation is now counterpoised it is put pitted against caste reservation and the 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 idea the agenda that is put in the uh, constitution is now totally under undermined by this economic reservation now by this the constitutional understanding on or the constitutional position of equality itself is violated because it is a totally or upper caste oriented reservation it is not economic reservation it is upper caste oriented reservation that will be the best way of saying it now let us come to another aspect what is the whether it is in the case of india alone there are more than almost 25 percent of the world countries today including south africa usa and many other countries this uh, some form of our affirmative action is there affirmative action means those alternative access positive discrimination which are there for those people those who are oppressed discriminated because of historical factors historically discriminated because the I mean, african americans similarly the other such because of gender because of race because of geographical factors many are discriminated they are never never in this affirmative uh, discrimination affirmative actions nowhere in the world economic question is involved everything is based on non uh, 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 traceable intractable factors for example caste you cannot uh, show it there is caste it is in embedded caste is embedded in society so you cannot trace economic question you can trace that man has this much income this man has that much wealth so it is easy for you to find out but this caste is intractable and untraceable it is to overcome that intractable and untraceable oppression that this reservation is instituted so this is a outright violation of the indian constitution i must conclude one more uh, saying one more point that is this uh, rss which is now controlling the regimes of indian power today the longest running and the biggest fascist organization in the world we must know so they actually had a tried in 1949 and 50 when the indian constitution was being drafted 
Comrade, uh, sorry, led by Dr. Ambakar, when the Constituent Assembly was drafting the Constitution and when it was adopted by the Constituent Assembly on November 26, 1949. That is why we celebrate the Constitution Day. So, this, today is the Constitution Day, yeah. November 26. So, when the Constituent Assembly was, drafted it, was drafting it, RSS in their organ, their mouthpiece, organizer, the name was the name is organizer. They wrote an article demanding. I think that it may be in the editorial also. They demanded that instead of the constitution drafted by led by Dr. Ambakar, the Manisprudi should be the constitution. They demanded. And when the Indian uh, when India adopted the constitution in 1950 January 26, again in January they wrote repeated that Manisprudi should be the constitution. That is RSS. What is Manisburdi? Why Ambakar banned Manisburdi on December 25, 1927? Because that is the ideological basis of uh, casteism. That is the ideological basis of fascism in India. Today the ideological basis of neo-fascism in India is this Mariwal. That is that RSS tried to put forth as Indian constitution. Now they are doing it. At that time they tried it openly, today they are doing it through their control over, through their clout over the entire administration. We know that the decisions are not taken in parliament today. These decisions are taken in corporate boardrooms. So no RSS is free, they are doing it. Nobody can say that they are doing like this, like this. But what is happening is that now why they are declaring that why we are RSS is moving? In a, engaged in a mad rush towards establishing a Hindu Rashtra. By 2025, they will be celebrating a century of RSS formation. By that time, they are planning to convert India a Hindu Rashtra. And we, some are saying that already a constitution in accordance with this Hindu Rashtra is also in the formative stage by, by, by sannyasis and etc. By there, some meetings are there which are already known in uh, reports. What I am saying is that now, not only there is, now along with this economic reservation, the NA, a, a CAA, Uniform Civil Code, many, many other methods, um, um, tools are taken up. So, all of this, all these are a, what is called a all-out offensive against uh, the uh, so-called uh, constitution, when, uh, the republican constitution which we call, we are also critical of the constitution. We say that the constitution has its uh, uh, drawbacks. But still that constitution has uh, that what is called the right to dissent. Public opinion, you, have, you can have the right to free opinion, free expression. So now that is being taken away. That is being statued away. So it is a critical situation that uh, this biggest ever offensive against the Dalits and the untouchables and the those who are constitutionally getting reservation that is now undermined. Now, by con in conclusion, I have to say, very revealingly, in 2015, I have said that Ranjan Gogoi, Gogoi and this uh, Nariman had made a revealing statement. In this uh, split judgment, in the Supreme Court judgment, the majority a uh, panel, a uh, uh, women judge, justice, Bela Trivedi, she said that it is time to end caste based reservation and if the caste based reservation is over, then it will be the road map, it will be a, a move towards what we will be moving towards an egalitarian, casteless, classless society. So that is what she said. This is the agenda. Now being Superimposed. So we should, all well meaning people, all democratic people, all who are on the side of democracy, all who are on the side of social justice, all who are against oppression, this high time that we should come forward and uh, a broadest possible movement against this Hindutva offensive is taken up at the earliest. This is what I have to say on this question. Uh, what is the uh, Red Star Party uh, alternative to the EWS? 
Actually, our party position is that we have a, because we have a program. Communists have always have a program. We have a idea of, our own idea of politics is different. We are moving towards a society where there will not be any private property. That means uh, we are moving towards social. Our agenda is that. Now in the immediate context that we are now, in the, in the short term, we are moving towards a people's democratic state where all corporates, all foreign uh, uh, capital will be controlled and all speculative forces will be controlled and uh, where peasants, national capitalists and those who are uh, with this country or who are for a democratic, national oriented development, we will be with them. But we will again, we are openly saying, we move towards a society where there is no private property. Therefore, that it is implicit that our method is different. But at the same time, the caste reservation is a different question. It is a specific, special democratic right that should be there unless until this casteism is over. So we have formulated a caste, we have formed a caste relation movement. So long as caste is there, so long as caste oppression is there, there should be positive discrimination. There should be reservation for the man. CPM and Russia is demanding that economic, caste reservation to be extended to private sector also. That is our position. It's very clear. We are saying that today reservation should be extended from public sector to private sector. Because all private, all public sectors are being privatized. Yeah. Therefore, we demand reservation, extension of deservation. So long as caste is there. So long as this caste society is prevailing, so long as India is a caste-ridden society, there should be reservation, there should be affirmative action, there should be positive discrimination against the oppressors. That is our position. Even after the revolution also, there is a caste basis question is there. It will be there. So that time also you have to implement also. What I said is, so long as caste system is there, because it is not a material thing. Caste is in your mind. Caste is seated in the in the thrones of modern technology. Yeah. It is there in science and research institutions. People who are scientists and technologists, technical experts who are migrating to imperialist countries, USA, they are exporting caste. Yeah. Now in the America, in Pennsylvania, a case is going on against untouchability, yeah. where these IT professionals are going, migrating, they are taking caste. So caste is not like that you use an economic question. So caste you lead to a continuous long drawn out struggle. So we, are, we cannot claim that all of a sudden we can eliminate caste. And caste means you have to live with, you have to, uh, you, your life. That, so that means it's a process. It's a program. That means uh, then uh, you have to love freely. Now if you love a low caste man, if love is an upper caste, Again, what will happen? Immediately he will be eliminated. Yeah, and is. if you die, if you if an untouchable enter your if a Delhi enter your round, you have to follow the caste practice. It is here. Even the so-called pundits, even the so-called intelligence, they are practicing it. We know this. So caste is there everywhere, even those religions to whom conversion has been there. There is also caste. Even this is Delhi Christian, they are still called the Delhi Christians, yeah. who are converted into Christianity. They are Delhi Christians. Yeah, yeah, Delhi they Christians. are elite Christians and Delhi Christians. In Muslim also, they are ah, ah. So caste is capable enough to migrate. Caste is transmigrating. It is cutting across everything. It is there. So it is not a simple thing. Our position is that so long as caste is there, there should be caste means it is oppression. Okay. It is oppression against one section of the one section of the people. Who are the real tillers? Who are the workers? Who are the toily? So long as that is there, there should be preservation. This is our position. And even, even if we establish, even if CPM and Rashtar captures now gets power, we will continue with this. We will strengthen it. Yeah. Ah. We will strengthen it. Ah. Yes. Okay. This is our position. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.